What's up, everybody? It's another episode of Between the Ears. I'm Scala Callan. That is Christopher Hall. This episode presented by West Virginia on SI. And uh, we don't know what's going to happen this week at the quarterback position for West Virginia. It's seemingly like it's like a day-to-day situation with starter Garrett Green. Nico Mark, y'all did have an opportunity to get into the second half last week against Kansas State and uh, didn't look too great, Chris, but... That was also kind of a, a tough spot for him to enter. He didn't practice, or he missed a practice last week. He was banged up, so he had limited reps going into that game. Much different from what we saw from him in the Oklahoma State game, but we'll get to Nico here in a little bit. But let's first talk about Garrett Green, because but even before the injury, he had not been throwing the, the, the ball very well. And after the Iowa State game, somebody in the post-game press conference asked if there was a chance that Nico would – would have a chance to get that job. And Neil kind of gave a smart ass answer and was like, well, what did you think we needed a spark or something? And we kind of talked about it before. I mean, you're down three scores. It's late in the game. I don't see how that's not a valid question. Um, and then last week against Kansas state, he's throwing under 50% completion percentage. He gets picked off twice. One of which was a return for a touchdown. And before the, the injury news came out. I was, and I, I think a lot of people are starting to wonder, is there a chance that Nico plays in this game? And Neil said on Monday that it was never really a consideration and basically said, next question. He was not having any talk about the quarterback position. Um, wasn't trying to go there, stir up some controversy. And I, again, I thought it was a valid question. Um, yeah, he did go 90 yards twice but most of that was done with his legs. It wasn't through the air. So at some point, Garrett's got to to show some improvement throwing the football. If he doesn't, then I I feel like it's going to force a change whether or not Nico is ready because they got to have somebody else that can go in there and take care of the football. Um, So initial thoughts on that before we just kind of dive into some of his stats compared to last year. Yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of it, honestly, is a reflection of the whole team right now. Um, you know, Garrett was so so eager to prove that he was a pro-style quarterback coming into the season. And you've kind of seen it with his pocket presence, staying in the pocket longer, waiting for receivers to get open and s- instead of relying on his leg. And it's, I think at this point, just kind of messed with him mentally, where yep. he really should have just been using his strengths which is running the ball and scrambling and emphasizing and making plays rather than trying to just be a pro style quarterback, which if you look at the quarterbacks that are having success, whether it's, you know, we can go Patrick Mahomes as who's at the top to Lamar Jackson, uh, Josh Allen, they all scramble to create more time and they all use their legs as well. That's really what he should have been doing at the, the entire time. But when you kind of look at the schedule and the defenses they played, you can kind of understand some of the struggles, especially with the, when he's, Again, trying to be a pro style quarterback when his strength was his legs. So at the same time, when you play against Penn State, who's a traditionally good defense, they that's better talented. They were e- they were able to easily expose his the the weaknesses of the offense and and Garrett Green because they were a much better talented team. And when you get that on film, everybody's going to replicate that. And he's really never been able to get caught up since then. And you can see it mentally where he's laid on on his passes against Kansas State. And again, Kansas State statistically wasn't great passing defense, but we know they're a good defense and they, we know they have talent on that side of the ball. So, when again, when you have that film against an Iowa State defense, Penn State defense, and they have the talent to kind of replicate that, that's kind of what you've seen with him lately. And it's just mental. And I can see why Neil Brown is doing it because he knows it's just mental and you feel like at some point he's going to break out, but it just hasn't at this, at this, at this point. And maybe with this, you know, unfortunately West Virginia's schedule has been front heavy the last few years. It was again this year and maybe it's maybe um, they can kind of get, he can kind of get out of this funk here in the back half, but we don't know with the injury right now. Yeah, and it's really discouraging when you have that type of game against the 15th-ranked pass defense in the Big 12. Like, as you mentioned, if that happens against Iowa State, Penn State, I mean, 
no, it's still not ideal, but it, it's more understandable when you have this type of defense that's had struggles against the pass all season long and you can't find a way to throw the football. I mean, I don't know. When are you going to throw the football this year? Is it going to be this week? Is it going to be – I mean, obviously that's health-wise, but is it going to be against Cincinnati, who's better? Is is it going to be not until the end of the year against Texas Tech, who's right there at the bottom of the Big 12 and pass defense too? So I don't know when it's going to come, but looking at his numbers this year compared to last year, and I did this, I tweeted it out, put it in an article – um, it's his first seven games of 2023 versus the first seven games of this season. Obviously, I didn't include the pit game. It was two passes, so I wiped that one out and threw the eighth game of the season on there for him. So last year through seven games, 1,545 yards, 53% completion percentage, 10 touchdowns, two picks. This year, 56%, 1,352 yards, nine touchdowns, eight interceptions. So – I mean, I guess the coaching staff did what they said they were going to do. They they raised his completion percentage, right, by a couple of points, but not exactly where they thought he would be. I mean, this is an area that they thought he would make tremendous strides in. They they looked at it and said, you know, every time we chart it from this year to last year, it's way above the numbers from last year. He can be a 60%, 65 maybe even percent, I think, was thrown out a couple of times for really being optimistic. And it's just been nowhere near that. Neil talked a couple of games ago about how he completed 70% of his passes against Albany. Who cares? It's Albany. (laughs) Like Until he does that in a game against a Big 12 opponent or somebody that's worthy of having that being talked about, no one cares about a 70% completion percentage game against Albany. So he's got to transfer that over, and I just don't know that we're going to have that happen with so little runway to go. He is what he is at this point, right? I mean, he's 54, 55% completion percentage passer. And for whatever reason, this year he's just made more bad decisions with the football. Yeah, it's a lot of it's just him being late with the ball. So, yeah, I think it just goes back to trying to fit something that he's not. And and, and right on cue there in in the background, you got the first interception by Garrett. (laughs) (laughs) it's, he's just he was trying to fit something he's not and he's got back to running and that's why they were able to move the ball they had more success on the ground because of him in the game so you know he got beat up if, if he stays healthy does it change the second half you know that's completely hypothetical they got down there you know towards the end of the first half and didn't score so it, it's 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 definitely frustrating because you can see that times where he he's capable and he's gotten better on, you know, talked about layups last year where he couldn't make those throws uh, to the outside. Uh, he's done very well at those. So it's just everything else. And to me right now, it's just nothing but mental. So you can kind of see it the last couple of weeks where he's used his legs more often than, you know, probably the Iowa State game where he made a couple of bad decisions where he should have just ran the ball. And to me, it, that's just a mental lapse. That's just thinking too much or going downfield. Instead of again going with his strength. So I mean any any great player that you've seen throughout, you know, the NFL or NBA, they lean on their strengths, they continue to work on their strengths, but they also work just as hard on their weaknesses so they can become a complete player. And I think that's just kind of where he's fell short this year, where he's not relied on his strengths in the game, but he did against Kansas State and they were able to move the ball. And he also took a beating for it as well. Um you know, the Kansas State, you can kind of look at it like teams had to pass against them and got yards um, because they were able to stop the run. So a little bit of give and take. So, you know, it, it, I think for everybody it's frustrating, right? And it just goes back to having to play defenses that can identify things early in the season and teams replicating it. And he just has not figured it out yet. And maybe it, it was just a bunch of good defenses. Maybe this is what's going to be the next five games if he's if he's available. So we'll see against maybe lesser defenses if he can you know break out and get a three hundred yard passing game. Um, maybe not because he's still really late on a lot of his passes. That one to Traylon Ray was behind him. He's not getting the ball out of the break. Like the ball needs to be there when it comes out of the break, and he's just not doing it. Whether he can't see over the line over the middle, whatever it is. Uh, he he just cannot get that done. Now he's been great on the outside, and he's been great on the dink and dunks. But over the middle, he's been he just has not it's not been accurate at all. He's had his moments. Uh, you could probably count a handful of times where it's been accurate over the middle, but the rest have just been way off. 
And I mean, that's why that's really why he's got, gotten so many interceptions because he's underthrown it or overthrown it, and it's went right into the defense's hand. And yeah, you're right. With it's it's not just all on him. I, I mean, the, the explosives haven't been there in the run or the pass game. It, it just feels like there's not been these big gains that you've seen from in years past. But I, a lot of this too is I think the the receivers just not getting open. I'm talking more of the, the completion rate than than the interceptions here, but. Last week against Kansas State, for whatever reason, it felt like they were just getting beat in those one-on-one opportunities time and time again. We're going to see more of that against Arizona and probably more as the season goes on. Teams are picking up that West Virginia is struggling against press man coverage. They also have to have the talent to be able to do that. And a lot of the defenses they're going to face this throughout the rest of the year aren't going to have those type of corners. So, no. <laughs> again, they, it goes back to the defenses they've played so far and – that's why you kind of got to wait and see, like, well, like, yeah, you want to get those big wins, but it's obvious that this team just doesn't have the talent because the guys that you were relying on, the Jaheim White, the Traylon Rays, the Hudson Clements, the Garrett Greens, this is really the only second year together. So if you're relying on sophomores to be breakout players against all these teams that are buying for the B12 championship, I mean, you did the preseason, right? Mm-hmm. He said they're not going to the Big 12 championship. They may have a chance towards the end. They had to steal some wins early, but they didn't. So are they going to are they going to do what they're supposed to do in the back end? Now they're beat up. Everyone's beat up on both sides of the ball. But that's a lot of guys have also gotten reps as well. So Arizona's beat up. So this is where you kind of like okay, let's assess it from here and see what this team's made of. Yeah, because I mean, I, I think. I've said this many times the last couple of weeks. I don't know where Justin Robinson's at. I really don't. I mean, this he, he's a veteran player. He's big. He's strong. He's looked good when the ball's been thrown his way. I don't know why he's not more involved. I don't know why Cole Taylor, frankly, is not more involved. Now, he's got a little bit more of an increase in targets the last couple of weeks. But, I mean, you say you tell me all the time. He's open on every single play. <laughs> Out of the break, he's six seven. There ain't no one that can guard him one on one. That ball no. needs to be there right out of the break. He's got the frame. He's got the hands. I would be targeting him 15, 20 times a game, and they might be. And again, it may just go back to Garrett can't see him because he's he's maybe too small to see over the line. Yeah, that, you know the the Big which is a very real thing. Line, Big twelve defensive linemen they they have length. <laughs> they are yeah. big. They are tall, um, and they do move bodies. So I, I think a lot of it is he's not getting some of the passing windows. And again, he just can't see, and he, that's where he gets in trouble. Where he's he's almost guessing where they should be, and if the D back knocks him off the route, it's it's trouble. If he can't see it and he's just guessing, it's trouble. Yeah, I can't remember if it was one of the interceptions, or maybe it it might have been the the underthrown ball to Jaheim that was wide open, and you could see Garrett was like on his tippy toes, like he was yeah. trying to to he was trying to throw it over the line. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a very real thing. Yeah, it's he he struggled with it, and it's not, you know, you need you need those windows for the line, and I I think just most of the time they're just not creating it for him, and they've they've gotten you know they've just kind of pushed the line back into his face, and that's trouble for a guy that's at for that size to to be a quarterback trying to make those plays. So last week, Nico in his relief effort went six of thirteen for fifty eight yards and a touchdown and had nine carries for zero yards. So, obviously, and we already knew this about Nico, he's not the same runner as as Garrett. He can run. He's more of a, a physical in-between-the-tackles runner. He's not going to be someone to get you 20, 25-yard runs all that often, but he can. I don't know what he's going to look like in a full-time start, if that's the case, but I, I think this is an opportunity for Neil to see what he has in Nico because you go – into the bye week, you, you got to have some sort of understanding of, of where your team is at. And if Garrett starts this week and he struggles and you lose, you're three and five, and now it's, okay, do we make the change and see what we have in Nico or do we try and, and keep going with Garrett because you got to get bowl eligible and you feel like that's the guy that you want to ride or die with. But – I feel like if if he's healthy, Garrett's going to be the guy. I think Neil made that very, very clear. Now, if Nico goes out there and gets to start on Saturday and performs really well, well, then we're going to have two weeks of quarterback controversy on on this show and on our site and everywhere else. So as, as far as Nico is concerned, what what do you expect out of him if he gets to start? What type of day can, can Mountaineer fans expect? 
I think you know, I like the big one from Nico. Um, you know, that team was shook when it, by the time he got out there. So it, he was already it's in. not it's not indicative of what he can be or what he his future looks like. And I don't think he's going to go out and throw for 300 yards, but I think he's very capable of doing it. I think he has a better arm. Uh, he's bigger. He's taller. He stands, stands tall in the pocket. So, yeah, I think you can see a lot from Nico, but they're going to have to have success in the running game as well. So they can't just rely on his arm. It's going to have to be complimentary football on that side, on that, just on the offense alone, and you're going to have to find success in the running game. And they missed a lot of holes last week in the running game. So they're, they're going to have to kind of figure that out. And it just, that's – you know, they caught sophomore slump with Jaheim, but he missed some holes that he could have broke out some big runs last week. And I'm sure they saw it on film. So that's just poor eye discipline. Again, you could credit Kansas State does a lot of things in the run game. That's why the top of the league and run defense. But he missed some. And again, it goes yeah. back to that. That's what you need from your big time players. The guys that you're open to make big plays in games like that can't have that happen. So they're gonna have to they're gonna have to get some you know, at least get some 10, 15 yard runs out of these guys next week against Arizona, kind of loosen up those safety. So Nico can work the middle of the field, can find Cole Taylor, can find Trevor Ray, and then take some shots down, down the sideline to either Preston or Hudson because he can make those throws all over the field. And if they can just get a little cushion with the run game, yeah, he can be very dangerous and he can run. He's like deceptively fast. So yeah, he can, he can find some space and make some big plays with his legs. My biggest two concerns with him are holding on to the football too long, and that can result in sacks, or it can also result in just mistiming his throws because there's been a couple of times on those balls over the middle that we've seen, be it this year or last year when he's had his opportunities, where it feels like whether it's a slant or an, an in-breaking route, and he, he you can tell he's getting ready to throw it, but he just doesn't feel like he's confident, in it, and then he delivers it and it's too late and there's no chance to make a play. So there's those that happen that I think have to be eliminated. And and back to the sacks, I mean, he he stepped into a sack last week. I, I don't I can't remember if it was the fourth down sack or maybe it was a little bit earlier, but he stepped into a sack, and I, I feel like sometimes when that, that pocket starts to collapse on him, he doesn't know what to do. And it's not that he's not a smart quarterback or anything like that. It just comes with experience. Like a lot of these quarterbacks that don't have the wheels of Garrett Green have to understand what the protection is up front, where the blitz is coming from, where the pressure is coming from, what the coverage the defense is in. That's a lot to understand. And rightfully, you know, with Garrett and Nico, both of them didn't really have that that same upbringing as a lot of quarterbacks in college football. We talked about Garrett at length. He's a baseball player first. He was a running quarterback. He was just an athlete playing quarterback in high school. Nico was just more of he was staring down receivers and he just had a one read boom he'd make the throw if not he he would run too, so it's it's a process for both Garrett and now Nico to kind of understand where what defenses are presenting them and what to do with it. So I don't know it's going to be a perfect product. I don't expect him to go out there and throw for three hundred yards, but they're going to need him to be efficient effective and play mistake free as much as possible. If he throws two interceptions again, if he throws two interceptions, it's going to be a hard battle. Yeah. Uh, he threw a dart at Oklahoma state trailing Ray for a touchdown. So he's definitely capable of doing it. And it's just got, just got to be decisive. It's one of those positions where you just got to be decisive and let it, and just let it rip. So you got to have confidence. He, he is, I don't want to say he's a gunslinger yet, but, he'll get there. And I think going into the game, if he knows he's the starter and getting that feel for the pocket early in the game, he'll have better decisions as, a, as the game goes on. Yeah. And a full week of practice, I mean, that's going to go a long ways too. I mean, last week he had no idea that that was going to happen. He even missed a practice, like I mentioned. So having those reps logged with the first team throughout the entire week, or at least have a, a portion of them, I'm sure if Garrett comes back to practice, they're going to obviously give him some of those reps as well. But Nico's not going to enter this game not prepared. So I, I think everything will be okay. Now, he was prepared last week. I, they were just shook at that point. I mean, they just yeah. lost a bunch of players by that point, and they were just get, getting punched and punched and punched in the mouth, and they just couldn't respond at that point in time. Yep, so we'll see if we get an update on Thursday night at the Coach uh, Neil Brown radio show. More than likely not. 
Knowing Neil uh, over six years, it feels like he's going to be someone that just lets this one stay close to his vest and not doesn't want to give the opponent any. Yeah, he, it, he'll say it's a game time decision, one hundred percent. Yeah, so <laughs> he's don't. Not, he'll he'll say Garrett took some reps. Yeah, it's not you're not going to get anything from him. No, so we'll see what happens. I guess when they trot out for the first time on Saturday night at seven o'clock on FS1 against the Arizona Wildcats and uh, see who takes that first snap. So that's going to do it for us here today. I'm Scott Callan. That's Chris Frawl. Make sure you smash that subscribe button here on our YouTube page at West Virginia on SI. Give us a follow on X at SI underscore WVU. We'll have another show tomorrow. And then Thursday, we'll have Gene here on the walkthrough game day show, breaking down the matchup and making our picks for this weekend's game. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you back here tomorrow.